the Rakugo Master. I have come to you because I have been summoned by a Lizzie Hodge whose student is studying Rakugo. Where else would Lizzie Hodge's student come for a question in Rakugo other than the Rakugo Master? I am the Rakugo Master. That is why Lizzie Hodge has come to me for questions, and I will provide the answer. Well, hello there. So, uh, I've got your questions, Lizzie, and um, Miss Hodge, Mrs. Hodge, is proper here, and i um, going to be happy to answer this for your student and um, put it on video so that uh, anybody else who may find use for it can use it as well. So, I've got the uh, list of questions over here, and first question, how do you prepare for a performance, voice, body, face, etc.? Okay, so... Um, I guess the first thing, if we're going to talk uh, physical preparation, um, one of the things I did, and I guess this isn't uh, really voice, body, or uh, yeah, facial expression, but um, I bought this very nice Japanese kimono to use and uh, got my prop, the magical Japanese fan that is used for Rakugo. Um, as far as um, you know, physical goes, um, I've got a little bit of a different look going on than I normally do. My hair is probably a lot longer than I would, and I've got this beard going on, but I think it works really well for my uh, Rakugo character that I've done, this storyteller. Um, and so I'm keeping it that way, actually, specifically for some performances and for you know, doing Rakugo. And, um, you know, we'll see how long I can keep it that way. Um, voice. So one of the ways I would prep for voice um, mainly is just to, well, one, that you'd, oh, you know, the basic is to make sure that you are loud enough for everyone to hear. Um, how big is your audience going to be? Are, are these people just right in front of you? Are these people far away? Um, do you have access to a microphone if they are far away? Or do you have to project? Um, just one of the things you need to know there, but um, keeping that in mind, being very conscious of how far away is your audience, how much do you have to project, keeping in mind that um, if you are projecting, you want to project properly so that you don't lose your voice or damage your voice um, in the process of performing. The next thing to keep in mind, um, and it's one of those things that you may not realize that you're doing until you're in front of an audience and they can't understand you. You want to make sure that you are really enunciating and not mumbling. That when you get up there, you are speaking in a way that all of the audience can hear and understand what you are saying. No mumblers in Rakugo. So really make an effort to enunciate everything that you say. Um, next with the voice, and we do get to this later in your questions, but talking about um, different character voices. Um, that is a preparation too. What are these character voices going to sound like? Um, do they have low voices? Do they have high voices? Do they have some accents? What do they sound like? Um, all things to think about uh, when doing the preparation. What are you going to bring to the table here? And then face, facial expression. Um, like I said, I've kind of, you know, went with the commitment to just grow long hair and a beard um, so I can have that going. But then other facial expressions are really important. I and mean, when you think about it, you don't have a lot that you can do with Rakugo. I mean, you are glued basically to this pillow or a mat to whatever you're using. Um, you don't have a lot of the other big uh, things that are in theater, like you know, flashy lights or an orchestra, big music, choreography, dance, and um, uh, big set pieces. And, uh, uh, all of that is stripped away. So the few things that you do have, 
you have to do them really, really well. So yes, it means making great use of your voice, making great use of facial expression, um, as much as you as much as you can exaggerate. If you're shocked, don't just do a, oh my, I'm shocked. You know, use use what you can. Um, you can use your upper body again. Your glued, you know, right here can't move, but um, anything else. Think, think about it. Think really how you're going to use everything for storytelling and to keep uh, an audience entertained. The one thing that you cannot do, the one thing that you have to make sure that you do not do is bore the audience. It's, it's you, you know, against them. And this is, this is all that you got and uh, a fan that you can use as a prop. Um, so it's going in there and seeing how creative can you possibly be? What creative things can you do to tell this story um, using bare minimalism here? Everything else is stripped away. So uh, let's check out the uh, next question that you got here. Um, what convention has the biggest impact on portraying a change of character? I like to do it with voice. Uh, vocalization is... Um, probably the one that I would do. I've seen other Rakugo artists that don't change their voices at all. Of course, in Rakugo, it's just done by shifting from side to side. Uh, Hello, Bob. It's good to see you today. It's good to see you too, Frank. What are you doing here? Well, Bob, I came to see if I could borrow a carrot. Okay, Frank, I have 10 of them. Um, to me, I mean, you can do it that way, but it's a little bit boring. Um, if you're going to change characters, maybe you can change voices too. And be something like, Hey, Bob, is that you? Yeah, Frank, it is me. Good to see you. Uh, good, Bob. Good. I was hoping it was you because I need carrots. I need a whole lot of carrots. Well, you came to the right place because guess what? I got a whole lot of carrots. Um, you know, things like that. However... You know, I guess there's two schools of thought there. Maybe some people would say, okay, can you still do Rakugo without using voices? Can you still tell the story even if voices were taken away and you couldn't use them? If you just had to shift back and forth to telling it, you know, the old way, um, could you still make it interesting? So you could do it that way too. You're, you've stripped everything else away. You could say that um, you're going to strip away the voices. However, for my Rakugo... I want the voices. I think that that's far more entertaining. Um, but you also could add to um, a, you know a little bit of the physical um, or a lot of the physical, depending upon what you can come up with. Um, so let's say that I wanted to shift into an old man. Well, maybe now I can use the fan as my prop, and I can get down here and I can use it as my cane. You know, Once upon a time, there was an old man. Oh, I wish I wasn't such an old man. Oh, dang, damn it. It's getting harder and harder to walk around. Um, you know, you could do a change like that. Um, also, when changing characters, um, especially if I'm going to use a voice, and um, I think this is a, actually touches on a question that you ask later, but, you know, how, how do you shift back and forth between two characters um, using voices. Actually, that is your next question. What steps did you learn to uh, change characters during a performance? Okay. Um, so one of the things that is really helpful in doing it, if you're going to really shift characters, and especially if you're going to use a voice, is if you use two very drastically different sounding characters. Like, let's say that I'm going to use that old man again, and I'm going to use a little kid. Um, so I'm going to go from a, kind of a lower um, voice that's kind of raspy to a very high-pitched voice. And that way the audience can know the difference between them pretty easy. So, um, you know, I'm over here to my character. Once there was a very old man. Oh, big nabbit. I sure hate getting older and walk around with my cane. 
Damn, my cane's falling apart. It's only this big now. It used to be that big. Oh, damn. One day, his grandson came to him and said, Disgusted. He did not want his grandson to visit. Oh, dang, damn it. Get out of here, boy. I don't want to see you right now. It's time for my nap. The young boy started to cry. <laughs> but, Grandpa, you told me that I could come and we would play hide and seek. Yeah, that's a great idea. You go hide and I'll come and find you. <laughs> in seven or eight years. Um, so see right there was a big shift of characters, but it makes it real obvious to the audience who's who. Um, as much as you can do right there, um, and you can try out different character voices, um, one of the things that I would say is helpful is to sit down and just really consider everything. Start with yourself. Like, can you do voices? Um, if you're, you're doing Rakugu, um, can you do different voices? Can you try some? I mean, just get alone and um, try some voices. I do it all the time at my house. I can't imagine what my neighbors may think when they hear me um, you know, next door through the window. But just see what you can do. Play around with different voices. Can you come up with, you know, you've got your regular voice. Can you come up with a second voice? Maybe a third. Can you do a fourth? Um, that's the makings for a Rakugo story. Uh, and then sit there and think, okay, what physical expressions do these people have? Can they do things um, as characters? Do they have, um, I don't know, do they play with their hair? Do they act shocked? Are they, I am a very smart professor. Look at the way I stroke my beard because I am deep in thought. I am solving all of the world's problems right now. <laughs> um I don't know. It's just playing around with coming up with different characters. Then, looking for a story. What story are you going to tell? And it has to uh, marry everything together. It has to be a story that you think is interesting and that the audience will want to hear. But it also has to be a story that suits the characters that you have um, and a story that you can tell well. Not every story is a good Rakugo story. Um, you know, something that you can tell while sitting here on a pillow or a mat um, that you can tell with just only this much expression that the only, you know, you only need this uh, as, a, as a prop here. And, you know, look through them and start thinking, okay, what might work as a really good Rakugo story? Um, I've seen people attempt some Rakugo stories uh, that I don't think were necessarily made to be Rakugo stories. Uh, there's, you know, these are very specific. So you got to go through and think all those things through. And just because you see somebody else do a Rakugo story and succeed at it doesn't mean that you will because you have a particular skill set, um, particular um, character voices and, and movements and things that you're good at. Um, and that works the flip side too. Stories that you can tell really well, other people may not be able to tell so well. So it, again, you have to start with your skill set your um, abilities right here, your different voices. Find out what you can do well and find the story that you can tell uh, well with your skill set. Um, and your last question, how did you personally learn Rakugo or come to learn about this style of theater? Um, it was while I was teaching an IB theater class um, or international baccalaureate class in theater and um, we started studying all the different theater traditions, and um, I learned about Rakugo. I learned about a bunch of other different uh, stories, or stories, um, theater traditions, and just got interested in them and wanted to learn as many of them as I could. But Rakugo is one that I think I'm really good at because I've, I've always enjoyed telling stories. Um, for I think anybody who knows me, I, I love to tell stories, and... So this just worked. I, I thought, you know what? I can sit here. Um, it's, it's easy for me to do. I enjoy it. I like telling stories, coming up with different voices and things like that. 
And so this would be a, this would be a fun one for me to do. Um, now I'll end this by, you know, putting together a, um, a story for you and th show you my thought process through it. Now I had this story in the back of my mind. I've never actually practiced this story and I made sure I didn't practice the story so that, um, what you would see me doing is unrehearsed. And if I make mistakes, um, you know, we'll see them. We can talk about them. Um, but you, you'll be able to see the process. Now, um, the first thing that I did, I found, I found a story that's good. I'm actually going to move because my legs are sore now. Even this, this pillow is, uh, gets hard after 15 minutes or so, um, of me rambling. Um, so the story that I picked, it's one that I had in the back of my head and it's, it's not the best for Rakugo. Like if I was going to choose, um, uh, a story, I might, I might not choose this one, but it's decent enough. It works well enough that I at least had it in the back of my mind and it's got maybe some characters that I'll do. So it's, um, we're coming upon Halloween. It's October here. And so I'll tell a ghost story. So I'll pick that one. And now I need to come up with some characters. So there's a ghost. All right. Do I want to make this ghost uh, male or female? And, and I got to think, okay, I only have so many voices. The voices have to be different. Um, let's make the voice a female and she's going to be scary. So, um, she goes around and she's talking about her bloody fingers. And so, uh, bloody fingers. Bloody fingers. Do I like that one? I don't know. So we, I might try some different ones, but for sake of timing for right now, um, we'll just say that that is what she sounds like. Bloody fingers. Um, all right. Now I need a uh, hippie-ish type person for this ghost to interact with. And so I already have kind of an idea that I could use for that. Um, so like, hey, man. I'm coming to stay at a hotel. All right. It's a good hotel. I've got this um, comedian, Mitch Hedberg, in the back of my head. I don't know why he just appeared for that one. So we're going we're gonna to borrow some um, Mitch Hedberg for, <laughs> for that one. He, he, he'll be the inspiration for that character. Um, and then uh, maybe we need a hotel clerk. Um, oh, so we got to make him different. Um, let's make him French. Yeah, he will be very French, and he will be the clerk in the hotel. He will yeah, invite the people in to stay. Um, okay, that's, that's what we'll do there. Um, and we'll see, and I'll just kind of make this up as we go. Again, I've never rehearsed this one. This is just me just telling a story. But we're going to see what we can do to make it interesting. Uh, the other thing about it is this story has got the absolute most ridiculous ending ever. Um, you're going to hate the ending. <laughs> um, and the ending is probably the reason that um, I haven't done it yet. It's such a letdown. But I think what, you know, here's how we're going to handle it. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to pull the audience in as much as I can. It's this ghost story about this haunted hotel and this ghost with bloody fingers. We're going to get them all pulled in. And then I'm going to give them this ridiculous ending. And then I'm going to throw my head back and absolutely laugh. Like the joke's on you because you just watched this whole story and this was the ending. Um, let's give it a shot and see how it works. So I'm going to leave, walk over there. I'm going to come back on and then I will be my Rakugo storyteller. And then we'll uh, tell you the story. Good day, my friend. Thank you for joining me today. Well, today I have another story for you. Let us take a journey down to the village where there is a hotel that has been there for many, many years. But the hotel has long since been haunted by a terrifying ghost. You see, up on the third floor, 
Way down at the end of the hallway is room 347. And many years ago, so the stories say, there was a young woman who was inside of the room sending off a letter to her beloved when she got a paper cut. Oh no, she said as blood dripped from her finger. It was a lot of blood. Must have been a very bad paper cut because soon she began to shiver and shake. She had lost so much blood that she bled to death from that blasted paper cut. That was the worst stationery ever. Well, they found the body and cleaned up the rug and they rented the room out a few days later. But in the middle of the night, guests reported hearing a voice saying, Bloody fingers, bloody fingers, bloody fingers. Oh my, no one knew where this strange voice was coming from. And then, one day, a guest spotted a puddle of red blood there on the carpet. Well, the hotel clerk, he did not know what to do. Well, I do not know what to do. These strange voices and, uh, and now there is blood upon the floor. This is a very odd indeed. Well, it wasn't long after until a very rich man stayed in room 347. He was sound asleep, but a ghost of a woman appeared to him and said, Bloody fingers, bloody fingers. But the old man, he was horrified. Ah, 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 I'm horrified, horrified. And he had a heart attack and died. Well, he was not the only person to see the ghost of this woman in the room and have a heart attack and die. Many people have now died in this room, all because of this girl with the paper cut. Well, the Frenchman said, Well, we are going to close the room off, and we will never rent it to anyone ever again. Yep, we will, uh, we will uh, keep it closed, and um, we will rent out our other rooms. Yes, we will. Well, one night, the hotel was booked. It was a dark and stormy night, as is often the case in these stories. There was a van that pulled over by the hotel, and a young, hippie-looking fellow got out with his guitar. Hey, man, I got to have a room for the night. It is raining out there. Uh, can you get me a room? Well, I am very sorry. Uh, we are all sold out, every room. Oh man, you got to have one room left. Uh, look, I got money. I can pay double even. Well, the Frenchman saw dollar signs and thought, Well, I uh, suppose I could open room 347. <laughs> even though the Frenchman knew deep down this was a bad idea. Well, he gave the boy the key, and the boy took his guitar. This is now a guitar. Can you see? It looks like a guitar. Just go with me here. Work with me. Well, he took his guitar up to the room. He took his key, opened the door, and he walked inside. The room is very dark until he turned on a light. Then it was not dark anymore. The boy put his guitar down, sat down on the bed, and picked his guitar up and began to play. It was not long until he heard the voice. Bloody fingers. Bloody fingers. He ignored it and kept playing louder and louder. 
singing away, having a good time. Bloody fingers, bloody fingers. Soon the room got very cold and a ghost manifested. Her fingers were dripping blood. She had beautiful blonde hair. Her face was pale white. Bloody fingers, bloody fingers. Finally, the fellow put his guitar down and turned to her saying, Hey, ma'am, you have got to cool it and get yourself a band-aid. I am trying to play the guitar. <laughs> that was a good story, huh? Come back again for another story by the Rakugo Master. All right. Thank you, Lizzie Hodge, for um, asking me to do this. It was an honor. An honor! <laughs>